Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy help define our contemporary world. My guest today has had a long and distinguished career. He's celebrated as a humanist, an activist, and has been a Chief Justice, a former Chief Justice of the Delhi High Court. He's been thrice President of the People's Union for Civil Liberties and has written extensively with passion and conviction on a host of uh, causes and issues. He's most recently been, yet again, uh, making news and in the news uh, as the chairperson of the high-powered committee set up by the Prime Minister on the status of Muslims in India. I'm delighted to welcome Justice Rajendra Satchar. Welcome, sir. I think one of the uh, sort of, you know, the less reported, uh, you know, highlights perhaps of the very process of the commission that you were working mm. on, it must be one of the, the rare cases where none of the commission members were paid. You volunteered your time, you completed the, the report uh, on schedule. Yes, yes. And um, I think that what was really significant, apart from the report itself, which we will come to in a moment, uh, was the motivation and the approach and the integrity with which you you you, you, oh, did, no. you did your I, job. <laughs> no, I think you must give credit to more to my colleagues. Oh, of course, uh, the entire committee. All first class uh, academicians, sociologists, economists. And I think uh, uh, more for them because uh, most of them were involved in the data work. And uh, as you rightly said, we weren't sitting as a committee, like a whole time committee appointed with all the things. None of them uh, had anything. They were doing in so addition to the work. So, so much has been written about this in terms of what's important and what's not and what's significant. What for you was the most important conclusion or finding that you would like to sort of underline with a thick red pen or, or a yellow <laughs> highlighter say, if you use modern well, you see, approaches? We, we, we had terms of reference in which we are supposed to give all the figures of education, employment, future, diversity, so we've given our figures and reports and others. And frankly, you know, when you give your report, it's more for the people concerned or not concerned to comment on it. But uh, we believe that all of us have done a job as objectively and as honestly as anybody could say. Chile, was there some uh, a finding that you found particularly startling or that you find, feel that you, you, you know, here on a public platform you would like to flag in, in, in the large volume of material that you have come up with? Well, you see, they were mostly, this time the advantage was that we could get statistics. You see, previous committees, they couldn't get so many statistics. One, other studies had done it from which we borrowed. And more important was because the government of India has a, a genuine determination to get uh, us material from various states. The Prime Minister himself personally wrote to the chief ministers to extend to see, because uh, the, all this material couldn't have been possible unless the states were to do so. And it was part of it difficult because the states don't maintain the record separately religion-wise. So therefore, we had to push them, send reminders. But I must say the states by far and large, uh, one has no grievance. I mean, the slowness of it is a part of our normal governance system. <laughs> Do I sense a reluctance to sort of flag uh, a particular aspect uh, or in, of the report that you want to draw more attention to than the rest, perhaps? No. Well, uh, <laughs> one of one of our recommendations is, which is to be considered, is mm -hmm. we've said that there should be an equal opportunity commission. You this see, is on the lines of the race relations what happens act. Is, because what happens is that Gee. people who feel it's not only Muslims; some of the minorities may also really feel in private matters there is. There is no response. I mean, there is no uh, uh, alternative remedy. I mean, if supposing somebody is denied government service, you go can go to a court. But in the private sector and the private matters, so therefore it's a question of giving more confidence to the people. So it's on the lines of the Race Relations Act in the United yes. Kingdom, where you can actually go to court and seek legal redress huh, because for you can't di seek uh, for discrimination on the grounds uh, on of the private thing. One can't seek any mm -hmm. discrimination. If I don't give my house to X, mm -hmm. or if I don't think there is no remedy that he can, mm -hmm. if it of course if you don't give him public service, you may go to court. Mm -hmm. So that's a question of faith. But this happens in all these things, and it would be unfortunate if these things are made into a political somersault. They concern every party, all belong to the nation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I notice amongst the sort of uh, 
perhaps less uh, talked about uh, in the data was uh, you know the, the question of sex ratios. Uh -huh. uh, that there is so much uh, anxiety and concern uh -huh. uh, over the uh, you know the sex ratios um, you know moving in favor of boys the male sex, uh -huh. but that uh, here in, in the Muslim community oh, yes. that it, that it, wasn't it, the case. It's very, very and that high. was quite uh, very surprising. High. Very um, high. It's, uh, never uh, no state more less than nine thirty or nine forty. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, which is equivalent to in most of the Western nations. Mm -hmm. uh, that's certainly very encouraging and as they say, uh, destroys also one of the myths. Right. What were some of the <laughs> other myths? And even the family planning uh, uh, was, um, we found it almost as good as uh, mm -hmm. any other. What were some of the myths, uh, maybe personal myths that you had that No, were, no, were like this as you said, <laughs> that these <laughs> uh, girls thing or the family planning is one of them. Mm -hmm. Or that four percent, uh, only four percent of, of students go yes, to madrasas. Yes, four percent of them go to madrasas. This was again other concept. You see, all everyone, uh, you see, where there is lack of uh, mutuality mixing, and as a matter of fact, that's one of the recommendations that we feel that there more should be more of mixed uh, and more of diverse in each institution. So I think the point was that beyond mere uh, legislative and, yes. and legal interventions, uh, we are really looking at an issue of uh, uh, the implicit uh, issue is really of celebrating diversity, yes. where the otherness of the other diminishes, mm -hmm. of whether it is uh, merely uh, in in terms of uh, well I shouldn't use the word merely you know but whether it's in terms of uh, uh, you know one's psychological, emotional, cultural prejudices, mm -hmm. whether it is in terms of discrimination in employment mm -hmm. uh, or in education or what have you. Um, uh, more in sort of you know reaching out now beyond to just you know the the, the parameters of the report, yes. uh, as someone who's been with the PUC, PUCL and has been such a, an active humanist, mm -hmm. how can we begin to approach uh, you know, the, the, the notion of embedded prejudices uh, where we, we fail to celebrate um, diversity and in fact focus on the otherness of the other? Uh, what are the mechanisms uh, that we can you do? Know, it, it's very surprising because frankly uh, in this country, I mean I think some of these Probably academicians very strange seem to think that if uh, minorities in this country are like you know the West UP or the England etc. They're part of this uh, country. All of us belong to this place. And as a matter of fact, I think it is more the cultural similarity which is nearer. I mean, I come from Punjab, Lahore side, and my, I find myself many times more equal and easy to converse with the Pakistani thing. <laughs> For example, I I go to Kerala and others. Even the Muslim dress, etc., is different from a UP Muslim dress. The UP, etc. So we are a vast country in which um, all of us have these peculiar things, and there is no question of any misunderstanding because of the language or anything. Even language is being the same. So what are the what are the tools of integration? You know, true intervention is this. You see, mixed colleges, institutions. R residential, mixed residential, we've suggested that government should really give uh, more support to institutions which have more diversity in their things rather than separateness. Mm -hmm. It's actually, I think, the uh, unknowing thing <laughs> that really makes us uh, mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, it's easier for people like me who come from already a mixed background mm -hmm. and the youngest thing. For example, you would have seen this even opening up with Pakistan, mm -hmm. the concept of the youngsters who didn't know it about it. In the last 10 years has changed tremendously mm -hmm. because you've known mm -hmm. and you feel as some of these children who have given the inter exchange between these two countries saying, oh, they are like us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what do you think then are the, are, the, are the sources of conflict? I think if you ask me frankly, it's more the politicalization <laughs> 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 which causes the problem. <laughs> but yet, uh, are you concerned, I, I, I don't know to what degree the report has, has explored this, but are you concerned about the absence of, 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 of leadership uh, in the Muslim community? No, that I, is able I to wouldn't like to, I mean, hazard any guess after all leadership. Uh, one can't say there is a leadership of very tremendous type and the other thing. These are all matters which grow up. Mm -hmm. I mean, Muslims have had a top leadership in this uh, country. You can't mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. 
Nazar Rafi and Zakir Saab. They were as top leaders as any other. So that's a matter of uh, time, circumstances, individually. There can't be any fixing that they don't have a leadership and the other community has a leadership. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come right back uh, in a moment. You're watching a conversation with Justice Rajendra Satchar, a former Chief Justice of the Delhi High Court, but I guess more significantly, a former President of the People's Union for Civil Liberties, as he reminded us. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Justice Rajendra Satcha. You were talking about uh, your background and I, I think one of the interesting things uh, that I discovered in, in, in researching this program uh, was that you heard uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah speak in the Constituent yes. Assembly in Pakistan. Yes. And, and, and so, uh, along with Indar, Indar Gujral, the, you know, the former yes. Prime Minister of India. So obviously your, your, your connections and, and, and roots are, are, are deeply embedded on both sides of the border. Uh, well, because I belong to uh, Pakistan, I mean, I did my law from Lahore. Uh, my grandfather had his first service in Frontier and Gujranwala and Lahore. And as a matter of fact, how I happened to this because, you see, under the Independence Act, every con uh, member of the Legislative Assembly became automatically a member of the Constituent Assembly. So my father represented Lahore. Mr. Gujral's father represented uh, Jhelum. So they became automatically members of the Constituent Assembly. Mm -hmm. So I finished my law, so, and frankly, we had no intention to move mm -hmm. uh, of 47, we staying on in Lahore. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to, uh, he went to attend Parks and Constituent Assembly. I, as a young man, said, I'll come to you. Mm -hmm. And went there, and uh, we were booked to come back to Lahore by train. And suddenly, you know, in uh, Karachi, air service had started to Delhi. Mm -hmm. So it was like a young man, I told my father, I said, why instead of going back by Delhi, why don't you go via Delhi instead of going back to Lahore, mm -hmm. we'll go from there. And it was nothing else but uh, uh, interest in a flight. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when we landed here, father, as usual, rang up uh, Pandit's office to say that he's in Delhi and would like to see him before going to Lahore. Uh -huh. And uh, when they went there, Pandit said, where have you been? I've been looking for you for days. And he said, why? He says, you don't know. Mm -hmm. He says, Punjab is on flames. Mm -hmm. Start evacuating. So he <laughs> went to Lahore, I stayed <laughs> on there. And uh, I did hear him, uh, Mr. Jinnah make that powerful speech. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jinnah, Mr. Jinnah, you know, was a very strict, uh, because he was a lawyer, strict conservative. I remember when my father, uh, got up to speak. Uh, now, he had done Urdu, Persian, etc. So he, want, he wanted to speak in Urdu. And Mr. Jinnah said, no, Mr. Satcher, the, the language of the Constant Assembly is English. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Your father, of course, was, you know, became Chief Minister of uh, Punjab. Uh -huh. And there was another interesting uh, story there, and that was uh -huh. that in your uh, sort of uh, activist and, 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 and days of protest, which uh -huh. lasted several decades, uh, you were in prison. And uh -huh. uh, your father came on an inspection visit and refused to see you. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, that is, you see, uh, I had joined the Socialist Party since 46. Jabrakash party and continued with that. And we had a uh, demonstration outside Nepali's embassy in 49 when uh, Rana took over mm -hmm. the kingship and Dr. Loya and about 50 of us, mm -hmm. uh, this against uh, the modern school thing, mm -hmm. Nepali's embassy. So we were picked up and uh, sent to this jail, which was where Molana Zad mm -hmm. College is now. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And my father was the chief minister and the jail minister. <laughs> so, you know, normal came and since it was 144, there was no problem. I mean, my friend Kuldeep Nayar would come every second day to meet me because we were allowed to be interviewed. So, so President very, uh, you know, deferentially probably asked father, Rajinder isn't there, would you like to see him? And my father was a very strict instructionist, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that there shouldn't be any even a remote kind of a suggestion. He said, I haven't come to see him. I've come to inspect the jail. He never saw me. <laughs> <laughs> so how many times have you been to jail? Well, uh, one earlier in 48, we, you see, we had the All India Trade Union thing, and we had one day strike, mm -hmm. a token strike. Mm -hmm. So we were picked up from where this 
Swatantar Mila, etc. Well, that was a short while. Mm -hmm. The second one was about a month and a half because we refused to give bail. Mm -hmm. And then the government had to withdraw. But that was about a week or so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in, 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 in your activism with the People's Union for Civil Liberties, uh, you have upheld many, many causes. Mm -hmm. What has been the one that, that has been the most passionate and the most close to you? Um, and the most significant, the most serious? You see, frankly, it's been every time. I mean, I think right from my, uh, immediately I retired, my first uh, inquiry that I held was in Bihar, in, if you remember, in Arabal uh, killing. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my, the second person with my report was General Sena. Mm -hmm. And uh, Karpuri Thakur was there, not the Chief Minister, mm -hmm. but he was the opposition. Mm -hmm. Then we had the second one, uh, uh, which was this, um, in uh, Medat, mm -hmm. those cases in which most uh, the allegation is that Muslims were picked up mm -hmm. uh, and uh, drowned. Mm -hmm. And I had a very powerful team at that time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gujal was there, Mr. Mm -hmm. Yam Khosro was mm -hmm. there in our team. Mm -hmm. And we did find that there was prima facie a case against the police. Mm -hmm. I wrote to the Prime Minister then, I wrote to the Chief Minister, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nothing happened. Then we went to the Supreme Court to mm -hmm. get them relief. Mm -hmm. And it is now that those cases are now being prosecuted against some of those people. Mm -hmm. so, uh. so, so what have you seen as the, 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 the decisive, the obligations, the, the role, the opportunity, uh, the possibilities, the real possibilities of civil society groups such as uh, PUC, you see, civil society, you're up the, against the no, state. You see, these groups have obviously a limited role mm -hmm. in the sense, I mean, the change in the, I mean, I, I believe in social transformation of the society. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then the civil society organizations have a good thing, something happens like this, you bring it to the notice, the media may pick it up, may not pick it up. But the real transformation has to be by the political parties. These societies like NGOs like us can only highlight the things. Mm -hmm. Though, uh, fortunately, PUCL is not like any other uh, NGO because PUCL is probably the only part uh, NGO which doesn't take foreign funding at all. That's uh, one of the most important things. Uh, but it has naturally a limited mm -hmm. role. We bring it out, uh, I think, in Bombay, uh, Conflagration 93, uh, PUCL has taken a very big thing. PUCL has been very active in everywhere, in Punjab for that matter, mm -hmm. in the days of militancy. Mm -hmm. But they have a limited role in presenting the thing which also serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. The people know what the truth is, mm -hmm. what the objectivity is. Mm -hmm. But if we really want a change in the society, mm -hmm. that can only be a political process. We'll come to that transformation, uh -huh. change uh -huh. in society, possibilities in a moment. You're watching a conversation uh -huh. with Justice Rajendra um, Sachar, who was the president three years uh, with the People's Union for Civil Liberties and a former Justice of the Delhi High Court, Chief Justice of the Delhi High Court. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Justice Rajendra Kocha. Um, yes, I want to sort of talk about your age. You're 84 years old and 84 years young. Uh, a, a lifetime of, 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 of passionate commitment to social change, transformation, mm. uh, as you call it. And uh, I, th I think that, you know, we as a nation, as a society, are, are struggling uh, with uh, transformation in a positive sense. I mean, change is an inevitable process in many ways. What for you is this ideal transformation? Change to what? What is your, you were a socialist, you worked uh, uh, you know, with an ideology that's sort of almost out of fashion now. Uh, what is your, your, your sense well, of I utopia? <laughs> you I, haven't given I, up. I, I haven't changed my views. <laughs> 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 because uh, I participated in the various uh, anti-WTO moves and which are now coming. Well, forward. there was a famous sort of, you know, such a commission on, on the MRTP, MRTP which, which was yes, the, one of the very uh, early sort of yes, that approaches was in to the issue. And, uh, uh, they, of course, we try to open it up, but I think what is now going to happen is something even much worse. So, What do you fear the most? You see, fear is the whole concept of a society. If you look at our constitution, it still stands. 
uh, we hoped for a constitution which really has compassion, a sense of equality, a sense of fraternity amongst the nations. It's not the uh, dog eats dog, not an every man and every individual, well, in a market orientation. Now, these are all thoughts which are put up. And frankly, they are thoughts put up because of obvious reasons of the economy and the development decided outside. I mean, the, what we had in our conception, we the people of India, a democratic socialist, that is gone. That is what we fear. And uh, in any society which has been built up, and even our civilizations have never been built up on this kind of a thing, it is, we all believe in a social transformation. And uh, that lack of it, I feel, is not really good for the society. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are hoping that uh, young people will now Take it up. I'm sort of dismayed a little bit because when you say that, you know, ultimately, you know, we need to depend on, on, on political parties mm -hmm. for substantial change and that civil society groups that we have admired and celebrated like PUCL and under your leadership only have a limited role. Uh, surely that if uh, in, 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 in the process of democracy, uh, each individual should and must count and as you have yourself, uh, stood up and been counted and reached out and, and made a difference to the process. Are you despairing? Do you sort of somehow feel that uh, it wasn't enough? No, it can't be enough for the obvious reason that uh, because of the resources, because of the reach, and because of the very system. You see, these NGOs, etc., we have a limited role. I mean, whether it's uh, uh, environment or whether it is the custodial deaths, or whether it is the fight of the poor workers. This, we certainly play a part, depending upon each NGO, how it works. But if you want to transform the society, you see, the question is, do you want to transform the society, or do you still think as tinker? If it's only a question of tinkering with it, then these NGOs, etc., have a role. I mean, some custodial death takes place, we'll go there, expose it, press me, pick it up or not pick it up picks it up, probably it becomes people getting. But then what further? If you want, because I believe in a change, real change, a democratic change of a society. I believe in a social equality. Mm -hmm. Now, how does one bring that? That can only be brought by a political process. Mm -hmm. It may be that uh, we are not very happy with the kind of political mechanism, political formulation that one finds. But then, it, is, it has got to be found here. Do you still dream of a socialist revolution? I do. I do, I do because... Uh, Jay Prakash Narayan, so many of the icons. Um, yeah, nobody uh, nobody uh, has uh, given it up. They never <laughs> gave it up. They never gave it up. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, it is not that Jay Prakash, etc. gave up the time. You see, when we talk of socialism, it, it everybody thinks sort of a, as if uh, no other culture or as if it's only this thing. It's the whole society being treated as an equal thing. I so what, what are the... What, no, I mean, it is not even suggested that you necessarily must have the state control. The, the socialism, uh, uh, probably some people seem to think that it is everything, even a shop has to be owned by a private person. That, that uh, we, as uh, a democratic socialist, we never had. Give us a few elements of what, what you describe and what you see as socialism. Uh, you see, the difference, I tell you, is this. Uh, we, the, between the socialists and the old communism was this. Uh, people sometimes wonder why Soviet Union failed. Now, it's very unfortunate Soviet Union couldn't succeed because you can't develop a socialist thing without a democracy inherent in it. It is part of it. Mm -hmm. You can't become top scientists, you can't become top writers and say, all right, we'll keep you in prison or we'll keep you outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the big thing. The individual is really the key to the society. What about the economic system that, 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 that you would recommend, that you would urge? Well, economic system has to be more equal, a more equitable one. It doesn't mean, I'm not suggesting that every economic activity has to be done by the state. Mm -hmm. I mean, who can say after having seen what has happened here? But, in a but it is also not uh -huh. true. You uh -huh. see, it, it, it's interesting, you know, one of the big examples that is given is the state uh, industries fail. And the, one of the examples they give is Nexual Textile Corporation. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know that Nexual Textile Corporation was nothing else but a corporation failed after all the big industries textile mills failed. And I happen to know a little more of it because I 
dealt with them when I was uh, when I was in the high court, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the position was, and as I wrote there, mm -hmm. position is this: no one will give any advance or loan mm -hmm. to these entrepreneurs because of their failure and mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the industry is to run mm -hmm. because of the goodwill mm -hmm. and the bona fide of the state, mm -hmm. it is only proper that it should take it over. Mm -hmm. Now this is very interesting. You see the so therefore it isn't as if there isn't there is no there is no conflict in that sense. But there is certainly a conflict if you are going to say well the social conditions or the health conditions or the social welfare of the poor people. Uh, I mean, it, it, this will uh, industry will look after or yeah, is, there is no be automatic trickle down effect. Yeah. But sir, do you feel that uh, do you feel you failed? Socialism or did socialism fail? Uh, to <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I won't be presumptuous. I think probably both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, because after all, the failure is not so much in the system as the failure is in the personal and the thing. Uh -huh. System has to be worked through people. Uh -huh. And maybe uh, we were not um, s strong enough or developed enough or couldn't get across the people. But uh, I am no pessimist in that. Because so what is what 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 dream, what goal, what agenda, what ambition have you set for yourself? Well, we believe in a good, equitable society uh, without this hierarchy, because I still feel that India hasn't even rid of its uh, feudal hierarchy system. Uh, it's a small thing, you know. Uh, uh, we consider it as a very high thing of uh, you know touching the feet. Uh, well, we were all. Uh, you know, taught this. You were taught this. It's all right, supposing if I have to touch the feet of my grandfather or my other etc. But uh, look at what has happened to is that now leaders of all India need to start touching the feet. What is this? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a feudalistic thing. Mm -hmm. But if I do it to my grandfather, possibly is a matter of respect. But when I carry it further, I am not showing any respect. It's a hypocrisy. <laughs> now that's what I think. Hypocrisy, if I believe, is one of our biggest enemy. Mm -hmm. Justice Sachar, thank you very much. Oh. This has been a great privilege. Oh, thank you. And if you hadn't ticked me off in anticipation, I would have touched your feet as a man of oh, great no, <laughs> <laughs> principle. And, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not <laughs> <worth it>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs>